Hi, I'm Sarah Taylor from our Columbia, Maryland office. In this video, I'm going to be creating a new handle design for my team's cordless electric carving knife. In the last video in this series, my colleague Wayne used 3D Experience SolidWorks to insert a battery pack into the knife assembly. Now, I will take the updated knife assembly and use X-Shape on the 3D Experience platform to create a brand new handle design using subdivision modeling. So this is my working environment on the 3D Experience platform. I have X-Shape, my modeling environment on the left, and I have my Collaborative Tasks app on the right. My initials are on these three tasks because they're filtered to just show me the ones I need to do. In my Project Planning app, in my Project tab, I can see a bigger schedule of all the tasks in our project, and I can see who is assigned to each task. If I go up to the Tasks tab, I can see the full list of everyone's tasks, and I can see whether they're in the to-do state, in work, or if they are completed. Now, I'm about to start working on this handle, so I'm gonna drag and drop that into in work to let everyone know I'm working on it. Then, when I click on this task, I can get a little more information. I can also see attachments, and I see the carving knife file has been attached to this task. I can drag and drop that, into my X-Shape environment to start working on it. I wanna make sure I have the right revision selected so I can see the B1 revision has the old handle removed and has the battery pack added. So I will insert the B1 revision of the carving knife. Now that the knife is inserted, I'm going to close this collaborative task and maximize X-Shape. I'm going to create a new component for my new handle shape. And I'll place this at the origin. This is now the active component that I am editing. The first thing I'll do inside of this new component is insert a picture. This picture is going to serve as a guide for my sub D model. I'll place that on the YZ plane and I'm going to have to adjust it just dragging and dropping I can also use on-screen points to get a general size of the picture. So the distance between those points will match the distance I have drawn onto my hand-drawn sketch. I'll enter that 200 dimension we see across the top. Just doing some final placement so that the left edge of the drawing sits right on that front plane, and then I'll adjust it up and down to make sure that all of the knife assembly is encapsulated by the drawing that I'm going to use as a guide. Since I'm going to be using this picture as my guide, I can hide the carving knife assembly since I don't need to see it while I'm working on the sub D model. Let's take a closer look at this picture. We can see it has these dark lines, which are going to be somewhat sharp edges, whereas the faces between them will be smooth and totally continuous. So that's gonna be my guide as I push and pull on all the different edges of this sub D model. For every sub D model, we start with a primitive. In this case, we'll pick the quad ball shape and just give some initial parameters for the number of divisions and also for the scale. So I'm just gonna start with two divisions in each direction and I'll scale it up a little bit. Now that the primitive quad ball is inserted, I'm going to select some of the entities on the right side and stretch them out to elongate this part. I'm going to add some more selectable faces and entities by inserting two loops going vertically around the highlighted edge. Like I said, this increases the number of edges and points and faces that I can select and use for my sub D modeling. I'll add another loop over here with this quick insert loops shortcut. Similarly, Loops can be deleted just by hitting the delete key on your keyboard. So 
Since I eventually want this front face to be totally flat, I'm going to start by creasing the two front faces, which actually is going to crease the outer edges and remove the surface continuity between that and the faces around it, wherever you see those blue highlighted edges. I'm going to apply symmetry across the YZ plane and the green edges around the model let me know that is where my symmetry is active. I'm also going to crease the next set of edges that I select. And again, this removes the surface continuity between the faces on either side of the crease. Looking at the top view of our model, I'm going to select all of these top faces and I'm going to use the quick toolbar selection to subdivide these faces. This inserts a new set of faces fully encapsulated by the ones that I selected. Now I'm going to do a box select of those inner faces and crease their outer edges. When I turn on the visibility of my bounding box, I can see that that overall length is a little too long. I'm going to do a non-uniform scale to bring these bounding box values down into a size that's going to be more like my final product. So I'll have 60 along the X, 200 along the Y, and 75 along the Z. Now that my model has been resized, I'm going to make it transparent so that I can drag and drop the whole thing into a position that's closer to using our picture as a guide. Now here is the real magic of X-Shape. By picking edges, vertices, and faces and moving them using the triad, you're effectively pushing and pulling on different parts of your model, kind of like modeling clay, to get that really unique and smooth shape. Next, I'm going to box select all of the vertices controlling the shape of the front two faces and use the align by line tool. This allows me to reposition and scale all of those points relative to a straight vertical line. When I complete the alignment and I look at those faces from the front, I can see that both of them are totally planar, uh, making one nice smooth face across the front. Similarly, from the side view, I can box select the bottom entities on the model and use the quick align to sketch a curve which the points will align to. I'll follow up with some minor tweaking of the vertices and edges to really match it up with the guide picture underneath. Now looking at this model from the top, we can see its width is pretty consistent from left to right. I want to make the handle a little more ergonomic by having it be narrower towards the front and wider towards the back. So I'll select this first edge loop and scale it inward to make it a little smaller. And then I'll select an edge loop towards the back and scale it and make it a little wider. Now is a good time to add the finger grip to the underside of this model. I can do a quick extrude on the bottom face here, which extrudes a mesh of faces adding solid material bounded by my original selected face. Now the extruded faces are a little bit larger than we would like for this finger grip, so I can select the bottom two faces and scale them down to shrink their size. 
Now it's time to just manually push and pull on some of those edges and vertices. I'll make some final adjustments to the front view as well, and just fix up this last face and exit the subdivision modeling environment. Now that the sub D model is complete, I can bring back the knife assembly and take a look without the guide picture to see how my design looks with the rest of the model. I'll go ahead and save it so my colleagues can keep working with the new handle design. And lastly, I will go ahead and transition my task from the in-work state to the completed state to let everyone know that my portion of the project is done. In the next video in this series, Wayne will import this new handle shape into SOLIDWORKS and add some mechanical features to fit the handle in with the rest of the knife assembly.